One of the things about our sport or a game is the playing field. Now, when you play other sports or other activities, you kind of know what the playing field, whether it be tennis, basketball, football, you know the sizes and the distances of all the different components of that game. And right. bowling's a little unique. Right, and you know, I think when you play other sports too, it's kind of one of the elementary things that we talk about. You know, they teach you, you know, this is how long the basketball court is, this is how long a football, you know, even though with football, luckily, that everything's sort of numbered. Um, you know, they're all really important pieces, and particularly in this game when, you know, angles and, and the whole, all of these things really matter. You want to know how long versus how wide, and all those things are helpful in helping you strike. In bowling, the lanes are so long versus wide, but it's, it's an optical illusion. Yeah, they look much wider when you look down at them. You know, it never seems that they're as long as they are wide, like you were saying. And when we're making, I think, adjustments on the lane, uh, understanding the differences there really can help you get to the pocket a little easier. Some of the analogies that get used in our game once in a while is because the angles and stuff is like a pool table. And they look at the bowling lane like a, a large pool table. but. The pool table, if you compare that to bowling, would be very long and skinny. So just kind of a new example, a lot of people feel like this would be actually to scale for a bowling lane, you know, length versus the width. But in reality, if you hold that up there, that is actually to scale pins, foul line, the approach, the arrows on the lane. That is actually to scale of what you're actually bowling on. The issue is, is that it is so long and you're sh looking down at lengthwise, it's kind of like being at a football field. And if you're down in the end zone, football field almost looks square. But when you're at the 50 yard line, you can actually see that it is much longer versus the width. And it's the same thing in bowling. There's some terms or terminology that we use in bowling. One of them is called boards. And it's, it's just like wood, you know, it's actually how many boards, because the lanes originally were all made out of wood. Now, some are made out of synthetic materials, but they still give that appearance of wood, and we still have what we call boards. Right, so on synthetics, what they've done is they've just basically drawn the boards onto the lane. And there are 39 boards across the lane, and if you're right-handed, you start from the right gutter, count from 1 to 39, and if you're left-handed, you start from the left gutter, and count from 1 to 39. We also have what we call arrows on the lane, and there's seven of them, and it's about 15 feet down the lane, and it's used for targeting to help you be able to hit the pins easier. And there's seven of them, so we have three on the right, three on the left, and we have what we call the middle arrow or the fourth arrow, and it's right on 20. So you have 19 boards to the right and 19 boards to the left, and this will help you target to be able to hit those pins. Right, and, and you know, I think a lot of times beginner bowlers and everything that I was always taught is that you want to use the arrows because they're much closer. A lot of times beginning bowlers tend to look just at the pins and they feel like you know that's what I want to hit I'm gonna keep my eye on that but looking at the arrows gives you something closer to target and oftentimes it's much easier to hit that. Now some people don't are not comfortable using the arrow so between the foul line and the arrows we have some dots and it's, sometimes it's easier for bowlers to look at that to be able to hit their target or be able to get their angle towards the pin so if you use the dots that's okay too. Right. So we have those dots that you talked about just on the other side of the foul line on the lane and behind that on the other side of the foul line, we have one set that's just just on the other side of the foul line and then two that are a little further back. Yeah, and we kind of use that so we, as a reference of where we want to start. So the two rows that are farther back away from the foul line, that's used for our stance. And there's two distances because not all bowlers are the same height or people that participate in bowling. So if you're a little on the shorter side or have, you know, not, it's not as far from the foul line, you want to start in that front set of dots. And the back set of dots is for people that are, you know, have longer legs, more cadence, they're going to take bigger steps. Right, and sometimes I think the speed of your set steps will determine which set of dots you want to use as well. If you have pretty fast footwork, then you probably want to think about starting a little further back. If your foot, the pacing of your footwork is a little slower, that first set is usually where you should begin. And one of the things is the center dot, whether there's some bowling centers only have five dots on the back on the approach, some have seven back on through the approach. But the center dot, the center lane is always the biggest dot. And it is going to be 20. And remember, there's 19 boards to the left and 19 boards to the right. You want to use that as a reference so that you can actually repeat shots because it actually is a secret. It makes it easier to knock down pins. So many times bowlers that are just starting or participating once in a while just get the ball and walk up there and throw it without any reference of where they're coming from and starting. It makes it really hard to knock down those pins consistently. All right. So the dots on the approach we have, like you said, that the big dot or the center dot is 20 and if we count five boards to the right of that that's going to be 15 
five further will be 10, and then five more will be the five board or the first dot. And those correspond as well to the arrows on the lane. Yeah, and your head, uh, your head pin is right on 20 as well, so it's in the center of the lane as well. So just like if you're shooting pool for a second, you're trying to break an eight ball rack. You know, you don't want that cue ball going straight down at it because usually people shooting pool will scratch. They usually tip it one side or the other and have a little angle going towards it. So again, knowing where that big dot in the approach and if you're coming from the right side, you want to be a little bit to the right on it, whether it's 15 or 10 with your feet, coming a little bit of an angle going towards that head pin. If you're left-handed, you probably want to come from the other side. Right, and you know, one of the things that we didn't mention when go to take it back to the lanes is what we have, range, they're called range finders. And some of the manufacturers that, that make bowling lanes, they've made it a little bit easier. They've added one more targeting system, I guess we could say, or, yeah. or piece to help you hit your target kind of going down the lane. And those are called the range finders. And they're four long boards that are often, I guess, marked by just a darker shade. And there's four of them on the lane, two on the right side and two on the left side of the lane. And they're about two thirds to three quarters of the way down the lane. And it helps give you another reference point of when you're targeting to get towards those pins. Well, this is a lot of information about the playing field and all the different markings on the lane. The key of all this is to help you keep the ball out of the gutter. Right, making sure that you consistently, once you find you know, the place where you want to stand and what you want to look, we want to be able to get consistently back to that same spot. So that's why we have the dots and the arrows there to help you. Because that channel or the gutter out to the either side, once the ball's in there, you don't get any pins at all.